So I chose Hall because of how they are more into theory and then more into practical. They balance it 50-50, not like one part is all programming, another part is all theory. So they teach you how memories work and how how fast you can code uh, the code you can code for. Like they teach you how to understand what you're doing. I think pretty much every university in the UK now has some kind of computer science course. Mm. I don't know what it was like for you guys. There was probably only, I don't know, a couple of dozen to choose from doing computer science, um, but now everyone's got it. Um, so you're gonna get the basics in all of those, you know, you're gonna get the coding and the, the kind of maths and stuff, and they're just gonna shove you through that. But with Hull, it's more, you're not doing it just because you need to do it. You know, it's linked to something. I feel like there's a lot of focus on what comes after the degree. You're not just kind of like, right, you've got your degree now, out you go, you know, be, be free kind of thing. Um, there's focus on what industry will actually be like, what you can expect, how to work with other people in a team and not be a horrible shut-in programmer who never talks to anyone ever. Um, so that's nice and like um, there is a lot of that collaboration going on. I don't know necessarily, I know for other subjects there's a lot of disconnect between the years. Um, so first year and second year students in other subjects might not know each other. You know, it's like, you know, never met that guy, could not tell you who he is. Um, but with computer science, you know, up year students are in the labs and they're hanging around, you know, there's um, the kind of student driven things or there's all these events like the, the seminars from people who are working in, in industry. And it's kind of, it's like practice networking before you yeah, go yeah. out into the wider mm -hmm. world and you have to make a LinkedIn page and you have to list your corner shop at the co-op shop, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> um, but it's kind of having, having those relationships and being able to um, know where you are and where you stand right now, but also be able to know where you're going, I guess. And I think that was really where nice. you could be, even yeah, where like you could be places definitely. you haven't even seen. Where it's like, oh. and what and what you need to do to get there. I originally was gonna do a year in industry. I've since decided that I want to go into teacher training after university. Um, but I know that Ethan's planning to take a year in industry. Which um, is, it's really helped because we also have a dedicated careers team, which we get oh, quite- so much support with it, so yeah. So support, yeah. Very get, helpful. <laughs> get a number of lectures uh, every trimester to assist us with our CV writing, with our job applications themselves, where we can look to find job listings and especially since I'm on a year in industry, that's uh, actually part of my course. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really helpful in just looking for it with someone having a second pair of eyes to go over everything to make sure I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. And it's some place for me to ask help. One of the driving factors for me to choose Hull is also everything being really close together on campus uh, with our labs also being open 24 seven. So we if we want to go and collaborate with people, we don't have to find a space or go to a pub which uh, closes, it's really loud. We can basically just use the actual normal teaching spaces as provided there's no, uh, no one in there. Or uh, even if there is people in there, we can usually just find a quiet corner in the back uh, and continue to work, which is really nice and something I've not seen many, uh, many other universities actually do. Yeah, my journey in, um to Hall is, I got chance, I'm from Leicester, I got chance from East Midlands, but I came to Hall for an open day and then that first day I was like, no, this is the place for me, just because the campus are all together. And the career advice is one thing that I asked more is about career choices after uni, what am I gonna do after uni? What are the options? So I talked to some of the career advisors, they were so welcoming. 
and open, they gave me like a broad, um, wide angle of what I can expect after uni. And in so doing, I'm that proactive person that even in first year, I wanted to get an internship in first year. I didn't get it. Second year, I didn't get it. I was like, no, I need to get myself onto internship and then actually build up on my core skills that I'm learning during my uni. For example, group works, coding, like networking with people. I managed to get an internship this summer, summer, three, three months summer internship. And trust me, it has been the best summer of my life. Um, learning how it works in the industry, waking up nine to five and integrating it. Like you already, how do you call it? I'm already building my body to, to, to adjust to that nine to five. And then going back home, doing more research about what I'm doing. And to be fair, coding isn't my thing, but the more I do research, the more I, I love how, how to solve the problem. But choosing Hall is, was one of the best decisions I made because of the lecturers. Um, I emailed some of the lecturers before even applying for the uni and then they gave me like a list of things that they are doing. For example, the programming languages, because I was doing an access course to computing and then the language that I was using was C Sharp. So I would, it would be easy to jump onto C Sharp and continue rather than going to a different uni and they start you with Java. So I chose Hall because of how they are more into theory and then more into practicals. They balance it 50-50. Not like one part is all programming, another part is all theory. So they teach you how memories work and how how fast you can code uh, the code you can code for. Like they teach you how to understand what you're doing. It's not like oh I've coded this thing works. Um, so yeah, it works. It breaks. It breaks. How it breaks? Why is breaking now? And how to solve it? So like I got that. I was like yeah, Hall is the place for me. I think um, the reason I chose to come to Hall personally after researching the course and talking to other people. Um, there was definitely some people I knew who were already going there and it was nice to talk to them like, why, why are you choosing it? And I think um, we'd learned C Sharp as well at college, um, but then we'd also moved on and learned Python and not for me. Um, so then knowing there was some C Sharp and C++, but mostly um, like design patterns and theory and things that transcend which language you want to choose, it's all learning the stuff that you're not going to learn, like sat at home, just trying it out or watching YouTube or Googling things. Um, it's learning like the important fundamentals as well, which I knew I'd get at Hull. Yeah. So one of the things to do, so the open days the students ask about that is that um, we'll teach you to program and we'll use a language to teach you to program, but we're not teaching you that language, we're teaching you to program. Yeah. Um, again, when I was a student, I think we learned uh, Pascal was a language at the time. And then I learned some COBOL and some Fortran, mm. and then Modular 2, then Java, then C Sharp, and um, specialist languages, depending on what you're doing. And I think as a computer scientist, you need the skill set to just switch languages. And if you know the, the theory and sort of the patterns of languages, you can begin to do that. And that that's was one something. of the reasons we try and sell to, or explain to students is we'll teach you programming as a concept, um, some languages as examples of it, and then five, ten years from now, who knows what you'll be programming in. I think that was one of the things that scared me before coming to university, because um, the first language I really put a lot of time into was actually Visual Basic, that um, we'd learned at school. And I remember going to college and being thrown into Python and it was completely different. And I'm like, oh God, the languages aren't the same. It's really important which one I learn. Otherwise, like if I get left in the dust, I'm not going to be able to get a job or like work with anybody else. And then the second year we did C Sharp and I'm like, hang on, this is very similar to Visual Basic. I wish I'd have learned this first. That like started to ease me back into it. But then even coming to university and talking to other people about like what languages they knew or like what languages should I learn? And there's no, there's no definite answer to that. Like I still, I'm still touching languages I've never seen before just because I have to write this little bit for this specific device and then move back for this other thing. Um, and it, it almost put me off of computer science for a little while because I was like, if I spend all my time learning this one language, what if it's no good? What if it, the skills aren't transferable? But then you come to university and you realize when you touch other languages, you're like, this is the same pattern I've seen before in this other language. Like, I think when you're first practicing it, it's the repetition you start to learn and you learn the syntax. Like it's, it's this block of code you just copy and paste out your head. So when you see a different language, you're like, that's not gonna work anymore. I have to, I have to learn what's going on underneath and try and rebuild that. 
And I think the more you do that, the easier it gets. It's really important what you're saying there, actually, is I, I, what you guys kind of gave me is a toolkit to learn. Um, and I, I can't even tell you the language that I know now. I, I, I could reel off tons. Uh, and when I kind of came here 20 years ago, the web wasn't this big thing that it is now. Um, we all went into doing uh, like applications. We created like uh, uh, not web applications. Everything was all old school, offline kind of systems that we'd integrate with, that type of thing. Now everything's connected. So I was one of the first, well, I say one of the first, I wasn't, but you mean, I switched into uh, web and, and that was massive. You mean the, the toolkit was very poor, but the skill sets that I learned from here were massive in enabling me to switch from Java to C Sharp, learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, it's gone now, woohoo! Um, <laughs> and I now know Liquid, uh, which is a templating language, uh, play with Python, Ruby, uh, the list just goes on and on, and it's that skill set. It's really core and fundamental. And it, for me, coming to Hull, what, and, and some of the lectures are still here, by the way, great people. Um, really want to shout them out, actually, is um, they, they give you the skill set to learn, to then apply that. Uh, and the, the support network you get from, uh, from the lecturers is magnificent. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a chat with Neil 20 years ago. When, oh. I was not sure about kind of staying. Um, it was one of those points where um, we all have it. First year you've left home, you've come to Hull University. It's a completely new environment. So I remember kind of going to Neil and just saying, not sure this is for me. He sat me down and you would kind of like stick it out and you gave me some really good words, positive vibe and uh, throw yourself into the course, make new friends. And, and, and now I'm here kind of in Hull still, which by the way, we have the greatest uh, number of people staying in Hull. And that's because of the, the people around Hull. Yorkshire is a great place to come, um, really friendly. And, and you see that in the university as well. I think here at Hull, one of the big things was for many years um, that's become part of our kind of culture is trying to support students, all sorts of backgrounds in becoming computer scientists. So we appreciate there's a wide range of students applying to come to us um, in our first year We'll have students who might have programmed for many years. Um, so computing can appear at primary school now, children learning things like Scratch from um, six or seven. And then my son is at primary school and he's <clears throat> been learning his program, basic game ideas and things. Um, at home, we're getting programming a game and drawing pictures and doing them. Um, so by the time he gets to secondary school and then um, sixth form and beyond, he could have spent eight or nine years of programming. Um, but equally, we have students who come in who've never programmed before. But it's like the idea of being able to solve problems and use computers to do something. Um, so we look at how we can bring these people in with different backgrounds, different interests. Um, so they want to do computer science, but where they've come from is quite different. And give them a, a place that lets them learn the, the key concepts, develop as programmers from wherever they're at the beginning. So if they're novice, that's fine. We'll help them develop programming skills. If they've already been learning to program so you understand how to program and maybe write code but maybe not why they're doing it that way or what it involves they can learn more concept more complex concepts and then um go on and specialize in you know, different the themes that we have whether it's more general computer science or software engineering or games programming or if going through robotics and things so all these different areas where we can develop students um, so i think as a university as a department um, over the years, as a school of computer science now, we can provide an environment where students can explore, experiment and learn. Um, again, the staff are, are there to give students support and help. Uh, one of the other nice things in the university course is the, the staff themselves are, are learning and doing things. So as researchers in different topic areas, we know what it's like to learn and face hard problems. So the kind of eureka moment you get trying to work on a problem that might take you a month to solve or two months or or some cases years um, you get to to face that that frustration and that euphoria when you solve something so we know it's like to be a learner and, and face challenges um, so that sort of feeds into our course again as is the different technologies we have so things which are kind of at the the bleeding edge of technology coming out we can get that as, as researchers uh, we develop things in um, augmented reality, virtual reality, in software engineering, um, cloud-based computing, networking, robotics. So things which, in two or three years' time, 
our graduates will be using and developing for, for the world around them, we can access to it now. I think that's a, a real benefit we have here that we've got researchers teaching, we've got facilities, um, and that commitment to students. Um, I think one of the, um, you know, when you're kind of thinking about where you want to study computer science and what type of computer science you want to study, is, it's quite important. It's quite important to understand what degrees are and how they differ across different universities. You know, some are very theoretical um, in the sense of uh, not basing themselves as much on your kind of the, the practical application. Some are very, very practical. Um, I think at Hull we find ourselves, you know, I would say quite in the middle in the sense that we do have a lot of staff research in the themes that Neil was talking about, robotics, games, games programming, software engineering, AI, data science. Those areas are all, you know, incredibly interesting from a scientific viewpoint and they're pushing the boundaries of that. But we also know that our graduates need to go out and, and get jobs and be employable at the point of graduation. So we balance that, uh, that, that theory and practice, I think, quite importantly. And it kind of feeds into our curriculum design. You know, we go out to companies, we talk to them. What would you like to see in our graduates? Uh, what, what's, what do you need at the point of kind of employing a graduate? So we're very aware of that, but we don't want to just produce that for the sake of it. You know, we do want the, the ideas to come from the research and the theory, uh, because that's where you find uh, you know, the new tools to solve the new problems, basically. You might, you might want to solve the problem practically in an industrial setting, but you'll be drawing on some of that uh, that knowledge from the broader computer science domain, really. As well as that, um, sometimes we'll get to meet alumni or different business leaders um, to see what they actually do and how our course will feed into a job in the end. Sometimes it will be through uh, the Computer Science Society or through an, a normal lecture but it's just nice to have different bits to see how we'll actually apply it at the end, not just, oh, we're learning it because we have to learn it. It's we're learning it because this is what you'll be using it towards. And it gives us a bit of an end goal. And I think the student groups, you know, mentioned there, you know, a brilliant asset to Hull in the sense that we've got, you know, three different societies, Robotic Society, Computer Science Society, and the, the Game Society across that. And um, Freeside as well. And Freeside, of course, uh, looking at more system administration, Linux, different multiple operating systems. So I think as well as the lecturers and the lecture content, you're getting that student driven content, which is, you know, really good to kind of enhance the community, really, and make, make you feel part of something. There's also the feedback engineers or demonstrators, um, depending on which way you call them, um, which are basically me and our uh, demonstrators, and we will assist in uh, helping teach the years below us so they can learn in a more peer-to-peer -peer manner, whether, you are free, whether they can feel free to ask questions to us, we can uh, show how we'd have solved something or um, help them to solve their own problems, it, just in a more friendly, informal manner.